Hello. Thanks for tuning in to another My Name is Miss Battle. This is the day that the Lord has made. It is Saturday morning. Ooh, it's actually afternoon. So, it is the Sabbath day, and let's keep it holy. Let's do good. Let's do good. Let's give God his glory. Father God, I give you glory, honor, and praise. I give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. I'm in the book of Matthew, chapter 15. I'm, I'm going to try to read as much as I can. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Boy, I tell you, last night the video was dark, and this morning, <laughs> now it's light. I, I'm, I'm not savvy. I'm not all tech savvy. But I am Holy Spirit savvy. Mm -hmm. I am the Word savvy. I am God savvy. Okay, so let's just go on because I know we got some learning to do. Yes, we are reading the New Testament. Let me recap on what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm reading the New Testament. Word for word, scripture for scripture. And my goal here is not for is for you to read it, not for you to take my word for it or anything. Don't believe what I believe because I believe it because, you know, no, 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 no. This is an individual walk with God. Yeah. And what God wants is the relationship with you. Mm -hmm. But you also need to know because you, 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 you say you want to be a follower. You, you, you say you want to draw closer to God. Then let's read more of his word. Because the word got to be so into you. Because when they take these Bibles away, and they will, it's coming. If, if you can't perceive this, this revelation that's coming, I pray that you I pray that the Lord fill you with the Holy Spirit. Because you can only see spiritual things if, if you know if the spirit, if if that's the most the spirit and the flesh go always war together. The spirit wants spiritual things and the flesh wants fleshly things. And so you can always have this battle. But, but the strong man, mm -hmm, who will win the battle each day, you know, what? each day you got to choose, this day I'm going to serve the Lord. And so, and by serving the Lord, he will... Open up your mind. The Holy, that's the Holy Spirit job. He will open your, your mind, your eyes, your heart to receive truth. That's what it's all about. Okay? So, people don't like truth. People don't want to see the truth. People don't, they, they say they love God, but they don't want to hear his truth. They don't want to accept it. Let's read chapter 15, Matthew, Matthew 15. Then came Jesus. Then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were in Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? Okay, talk to him, Jesus, because see, you got to stop living traditionally what was passed down, what was passed on. This is what we believe, and this is how we used to do it, you know. Oh, my goodness. Tradition will keep you in darkness. I said it, yeah, because it's either light or dark. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. My job is to just blow the horn. We're living in the last days. Repent, repent, repent. Get yourself on straight street. <laughs> that is my job. And I'm using any tool that I can use that God put before me to say it. Okay, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Yeah, you got to be bold with this word. You got to be. You got to be. Because the Holy Spirit gives you boldness, and we will read that. That's, that's one of the evidence. See, you want to talk about evidence of the Holy Spirit. The, one of the evidence is being bold with the word. Being bold in what you don't turn from the left to the right. Stay on the solid rock. Stay on the truth. 
people don't want to hear truth. Now, so get, get away from that tradition, that old traditional church. If that church is still in tradition, something is wrong with that church because we're living in a new age. We're living in a new time, a new millennial. Don't you know a thousand years ago is a totally different from now? Don't you know ancient time is totally different from now? Millennials change. The world change, okay? And you can't reach new people. Oh, I said that in the we, we talked about that in the last the last uh yesterday. Old old wine. You can't put new wine in old wine skin. That's what scripture say. So get out of this traditional church and get into the new church, which is the kingdom of God church. You better stop this tradition. You better stop it because great grandma did it and she passed it on to great grandma, grandma, then mama, then I'm passing it on to my children and now my grandchildren doing the same thing. Stop it. We're not really talking about religion and holidays. You better stop it. Them traditions. God is so tired. He, he He's given us so many so much grace to get it right. He's given us so much time. But see, I can I equate grace with time. Because the, when, when God gives you grace, because he's giving you more time. Let's come on. Let's let let's let me go ahead. Out of tradition. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, but you say in your tradition say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whosoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of non-effect by your traditions. Let me let me break that down to you. Let me break that down to you. Because you feel like, okay, oh, 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 the word here say, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father and mother, it is a gift. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this. You you ought to be thankful I'm doing this, you know. You know, you you ought to be thankful. I ain't put you in a nursing home. Oh, oh yeah, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. And, and these are seniors, and I talk about this all the time, uh, the nursing homes. And, you know, but the thing is, with your tradition, you think you are, you, you think you're doing a God of service by doing what you do to your parents? But you're really doing it for gain? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. that, that's the reason why I, a lot of people keep their parents. They ain't, and I'm not, hey, let me get it right. Them, them, don't you go back and say, Miss Bad, or say this. Uh-uh. It's a gift to have children. That's what the scriptures say. It's a gift to have children. Mm-hmm. So now, as we get older, it's a blessing, not a gift. It's a blessing to take care of the parents. It is a blessing. It's honored by God. Simple as that. That So don't think because your traditions saying this is what I supposed to do, but your heart is not in it. Your heart is far from it. But you don't want to be, you know, people people don't want to be the one to say, you know, I had to put her in a nursing home or put my dad in a nursing home because I'm not that person, you know. But then you're miserable. If it ain't no joy watching your parents as they age, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Now, I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's move on. But this is scripture. This is scripture. Don't think you're doing God a service. 
Mm-mm. Because just like going to church, anything you do, just because you're going to church, don't think you're doing God a service because you're going to church. The devil goes to church. <laughs> Y'all better, we, we, we got to get it right. We got to get it right. Let's go ahead on. Ye hypocrites, well did Elijah the prophet of you saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine and commandments of men. Hey, I, I, I read it for yourself. Don't take Miss Bad word. Mm -mm. You're doing, you, you, you living a life in vain. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defile a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defile a man. So, unless God called you aside to not to do something, and I, I realized that with me, that was one of the lessons I had, uh, that was one of the lessons. Because as I read scripture, we want to change. We have the desire to change. And then we know that God don't change. So now we try to order our life. You know, I don't eat pork. I don't do this and I don't do that. We try to order our life to please the Lord. And God honors that. You know, oh, he honors that. Yes, he do. Because he honoring the heart. The heart is with him. The heart, the mouth and the heart has got to go together with him. How can two walk together unless they agree? You got to agree with the Lord. The Lord don't have to agree with you. <laughs> Stop using lip service. Stop going to church just to be seen. Stop going to church just to occupy some time. I ain't got nothing to do. Let me go, let me get God some, some service of mine, you know. Stop going to church for the wrong reasons. That's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. Put your mind on God. That's the reason why there's going to, that's the reason why the falling away of the church. He already told us it's going to be a falling away of the church. Because there's so much foolery in the church. There's so much wickedness in the church. So many devils sitting up in the church. My, they heart is far from me. The Lord said, not me. Anywho. Not that which groweth into the, not that that goeth into the mouth defile a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defile a man. And then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest that thou the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Because the word of God will offend you. It cuts like a knife. The word of God is a two-edged sword. The word of God is the sword. It cuts. It hurts. It, it, it'll kill, that, it'll kill that, 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 that fleshly spirit. The word of God is here to kill the flesh. But he answered and said, and, and people that don't want to receive truth, they get offended. Oh, this, she talking about me. I'm not, I'm talking about the world. I'm, you know what, you gotta, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that's been done has been done before. It's been done before, before. Ain't nothing new under the sun. People rebelled, they rebelled back then, they gonna rebel now. They gonna rebel all the way to the end of the world. That's what revelations say, even after Jesus came on the scene, um, you know, that thousand years. Even after, before he rolled up the sky, and that's it, that's it. Because, again, we know there's got to be a battle of Armageddon. So we know that the Satan spirit, the demonic spirits is out here. They out here trying to just get into everybody, into anybody, any and everybody. Well, let's just put it this way. He don't need the ones that's already in the world because they already on his side. But his job is to steal, kill, and destroy the saints. And they believe and they and what they and what they stand on, that's his job. 
The word of God kills that flesh because we got to kill it. We got to kill it. We can't walk in flesh. You cannot walk in flesh and the spirit. That's why I said, I'm tired of switch hitting. I'm so tired of switch hitting. So I'm not going to switch it no more. I'm going to be on this side and stay on this side. I'm going to walk on this path. Yeah, when you slip, get back up. Recognize it. I'm sorry I slipped, Lord. Uh-uh. We got to come to God. You ought to feel so guilty. <laughs> and so, and yeah, I said, everybody that know me, yeah, I'm not jumping off. My finger is right here where I'm going to start. But everybody that know me and and. I, I, I've been using that word for a long time. I'm talking about years. Switch it, because I used to use it. And I'm telling you the truth, hey. I used to use it for the down low, brother, because we know they, they them are the switch it. That's who I call the switch it. You switching one way, you you hitting her, and then you're going back and you're hitting him. You, oh, God. Because they out here. I'm sorry to say the truth of the matter is they out here. They are out here. Switch hitters. But mine now, the switch hitting, we're going to get out of that. And we're going to call switch hitting the world. See, you switching from God to the world. I had to make that clear, what I mean by switch hitting. <laughs> Here we go. Uh... Then, I'm on 15 and, 15 and 13. But, he's, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. So, if the word of God is not planted within you, the devil can, you know, the devil just come. And, and, but let me tell you another thing. Let me let me say this. Let me throw this out here at you. Because when people, let's say, go out, binge or snap or, you know, do something heinous, you know, whatever it is. Don't you know they didn't just, they didn't just, uh, they, they didn't just change that moment when they committed mass murder. They didn't just change Right then, the devil didn't say, kill them, and they turned around and killed them. No, 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 no. These are spirits that's been cultivated, cultivated. These have been uh, people that hurt, you know, because they say, and we know hurt people, hurt people. You hurt people. Oh, Lord. Forgiveness, we got to start walking in forgiveness. Because that's that's a opening, that's a that's a port for Satan to come in and use you. Because see now, here's where I'm going with that. Because hurt people, hurt people from their trauma, from their past, and they done got hurt, and now they hurting others as they adult years. Same scenario. When people are trauma, traumatized, and I'm not nobody, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a theologian, I'm just, I'm just a person trying to spread the good news, open up our eyes. But the thing is, but the point I'm trying to get to is that anger, that, that anger and malice and jealousy and all of them spirit that, that's been in you, because you harbored this, you didn't harbor, you, you got, that's why God say, confess, confess. If you don't let that stuff out, it manifests. And see, now that, that's how Satan can start twisting you because it's buried and, it, you know, you ain't, you ain't let it go. You ain't let that problem go. You ain't let that person go that you've been tied to or whatever. I'm just saying it's a spiritual thing. You have not let that you have not confessed, you know, Lord, I've been working in witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? These are these are ports uh, where Satan get in. So now that Satan and got in, and you think that he left you alone because life goes on, and you know, you I, I you know, you ain't forgave, but you you say to yourself, I didn't got past it, but you really haven't got past it. You really haven't. So these things are buried 
in your heart. They done, they done took root in your heart. Meanness. It done took root. So now, when somebody, when you are offended, it stirred that spirit up in you. That, that spirit been stirred up because you offended me. You know, let me offend you. Let me attack you. Let me, oh, you see what I'm saying? So now, now that Satan is just running rapid, rapid now. So when people say they snapped, that was already in them. They just never, they never confessed that, that bitterness, that anger, that, you know, they just never confessed it. It's still there. It manifests you. And I say this all the time. We don't, we still the same people. Although you, you, you know, you didn't, you didn't change your lifestyle, but you still that same person. God made everybody individual. He ain't going to change what he done made about you. He, no, no, no. He wants you to be you. So, again, I say, although we get saved, we still have that same personality. We still have, but what we, what we do is we confess. We ain't holding no grudges because the Lord said, I love you, and you got to love others. The Lord said, I forgive you, so you got to forgive others. This is what, you know, so once we realize, oh, let me forgive. Let me forgive them, and let me forgive. Let me let this go. Let me Bind up, let me bind up the strong man because he's strong in your life. He, he, he's strong. If he can control, if the devil can get you to move the opposite way of what, the way the Lord wants you to move, he's in control. He's your master because he's the master of your life. He's, he, he, he's one controlling your, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. That makes him the master. He's the Lord of your life. I know I done went there. I know I done went all the way. But that's just me. You got to, you either going to love me or you going to hate me. No gray area. And I just know that because, you know, through life, life will teach you a whole lot of things if you just pay attention. If you just learn from your mistakes, and boy, haven't I made a whole bunch of them. But they are learning lessons. I, you can see that spirit coming because I done been there already. I done been there. I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Rode the train. <laughs> yeah. And came back. So when I see that spirit coming again, oh, you, yeah, I recognize you, devil. I recognize you. Be gone. <laughs> I rebuke you, Satan. Okay. Let's just get on. But the point I'm getting to, I know I, I, I feel like I'm rambling. But I don't care how you feel about me rambling because I know I get this. They, they email me, you know, I mean, uh, comment on, just get to the point. I, I know. <laughs> I like talking. And so I'm going to get out here in this world. So I got to give my God his glory first. And that's by telling the truth. I got to tell the truth so that people can know. We don't, the Ten Commandments, the law would not just the Ten Commandments, the book of Leviticus, the laws wouldn't be there if they were not done already. These things been done. That's the reason why it's, it's, it's although we think, of course we ain't supposed to do these things. Of course we don't do that. But evidently it's been done. God had to put it in writing to not to do it. So until you recognize wrong and right, how can you how can you even go right if you don't recognize right? How? You got to recognize right. Yeah, that 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 you just got to because that's making decisions daily. What decision? What which way I'm gonna go today? Which way I'm going to go today? Yeah, I've been invited to a party. I've been invited to a party. I've been invited here. I've been invited there. I'm not saying don't go. Yes, go. But if that, if that, you see, you see the spirits that there. Now you, you, you show up, but you don't have to stay there. Because you already see where this going to take you. Uh, come on now. You already know if I do this. This is bound to happen. Let's keep going.
Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, they offended. Then, 15 and 12, then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees was offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant that ha which my father, heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. So if you're following a false teacher, y'all both going to fall in a ditch. Because the teacher's already blind. And you're following somebody that's blind. So now you blind. How can light only... Jesus Christ, the word of God, is the light. Light and darkness don't go together. So if you're blind... That means you can't see. That means you're in darkness. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye not yet not without understanding? He wants us to understand the word. He really do. God, Jesus saying, I need y'all. And he gets, you know, you can take it however you want. We don't know how he said it. But I can say it a whole bunch of ways. You don't know yet. You ain't got the understanding yet. Or have you not understood yet? Let me continue so that you can keep going. You, we, we don't know. But what we do know is he's saying, get you some understanding. And Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. So whatever you eat, get devoured and be expelled. Spiritually, whatever you eat, <laughs> get devoured and is expelled at the other end, at the mouth. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murder, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blaspheme. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You eat it, devour it, and then what's in you? Will be will come out your mouth. That's why I said you got all you gotta do is listen to people. They can talk God holy and everything and smile and everything. But once you get to know a person and then you they start their character is in question now. I know that happens. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. I can befriend the person, but then once I start seeing their character, I'm thinking, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it shows. Let's go. But I'm going to read that one more time for the ones that miss this. What's in a man's heart? Because the heart is evil. The Bible tells us this. This is what's in the heart of man. Evil thoughts. They think evil. You know, they think. They just think evil. They think about it say murder and next murderers, adulterers, because they think about oh, be gone, people. You know they think about killing your spirit. They think about murdering you spiritually. They thinking about how can I bring them down. Adulterers. They think about oh Lord the lustful things. How can I? ease on in there and, and be with her husband or his or, or wife, you know. <laughs> yeah, his wife. They think about these ain't God, you know. They, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Because we know these people. These people are out here in the world. This is a mean world. You got to know you're living in a mean world. Mm -hmm. People, they, they want to be so conniving if I just be friend with them, you know, if I can just be her friend or his friend, I can get in. 
Get in where you fit in, you know. Mm -mm, don't do that. Don't do that. This is what's in the man's heart. This is what the Bible say. Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication. Fornication. If I can just sleep with her or him. If I can just... If I can just have one time, one time, I'll change her whole life. I'll change his life because they have this fornication. You know, I can control. Let's talk about fornication because fornication, you're not married. You're just having sex and you're not married. That's against God. That's against God. We know that. You know, and it ain't all right. So I'm not going to tell you it's all right. Mm -mm, it's just not all right. Repent. Repent, truly repent. But let's talk about it because he's saying this is in your heart. The lust, the fornication is in your heart. You want to fornicate, you know. Theft, false witness. You just got to steal. You just got to take something. Even if it's just a little thing. A little thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I know you say I'm not a klepto. I don't. I don't have to steal. But you are. <laughs> you are. Little things. Didn't nobody tell you you can have it? You took it. Yeah, I know you thought I wouldn't trip off it, but you took it. Mm hmm Now we can go deeper with theft. We can go deeper with theft because you stealing the affection from God. Mm, ha, ha, yes, you're stealing the affection from God. Because, see, people, we want love. We all want love. We all want to be loved. We do. And so when a manipulator come into our life, knowing you just want to be, he just want to be loved. She just want to be loved. So now I'm going to manipulate. Mm -hmm. I got to manipulate to get her affection, to get his affection. And see, now once they, the manipulator, the deceiver come in, and now they got your affection. Mm -hmm. they, done did, they done stole your affection from the Lord. Because see, now once they get your affection, now that, I, now that I've been affected by you, I want to spend time with you. I want to communicate with you. I want to talk with you. I want to be with you. And the more I want to be with you, the less I'm with God. You done stole the affection. Let's move on. Let's move on. False witnesses and blasphemous. A liar. We know a false witness is a liar. God hates liars. He's telling you these things because these are the things that will stop you from getting into the kingdom of God. Yes, they will stop you. Evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornication, theft, false witness, and blasphemy. Okay, let's talk about this theft. <laughs> I mean, this uh, that was the, the false witness, the lie. The devil is the master of lies. I know we say we don't lie. I know we said it was just a little lie. I know sometimes we even say it was just a little white lie. You know, that, that was something simple. We, we, you know, little lies. You know, but it's a lie. But what people fail to realize is half truth. I'm only going to tell you half the truth. That's a lie. That's again, there go that deceptor. Here come the deceiver, come to deceive us and manipulate our thinking because, see, now they're telling you half-truth, what you're supposed to build on a half-truth. And they didn't tell you the whole truth because had you told me the whole truth, I would have made my decision on the whole truth. I made my decision on everything I know but because it's the whole truth. But you manipulated, you lied, and you told me half truth, okay? So half truth, it's a lie. A little lie is still a lie. Stop lying. The Bible says the devil is the father of liars. It don't cost you nothing to tell the truth. It might cost you a friend. It might cost you a ministry. 
it might cost. That that's what it's gonna cost. By truth. When you start telling the truth, people are gonna leave. <laughs> they don't want the truth. They don't want the light because the truth is the light. And how can you see in darkness unless some light come in? So people are gonna run just because of the truth. The light. They don't want to see themselves as this 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 liar. They don't want to see themselves as this prideful person. No, no, no. They don't want to see themselves as the adulterer, the fornicator. They don't want to see it. They they want to lie. They 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 rather have a lie. Give me a lie, and I can work with the lie. They say, you know, give me a lie. You listening to these? There's these, these pastors and preachers and teachers, prosperity, give me a lie. Something I can hold on to. Because the lie you telling me is that God owed me something because I gave him something. Oh, they holding on to a lie. Let's move on. Blasphemous. Oh, to blaspheme. The Bible say you can blaspheme against Jesus. You can talk about Jesus. He'll forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you because Jesus has got a loving heart. He going to forgive you because that's what he do. That's how he walk. That's how he roll. That's his nature. Okay, that's his, that's him. A love of peace and harmony and humility. So lie on me all you want. But I'm here to tell you a lie, a lie hurts. We know a lie hurts. We know a lie hurts. And you know what? And I, I'm saying this by experience because a lot of people perceive, they don't perceive you as you are. They're perceiving a lie. And what they do is they remember the lie. They keep the lies. If somebody lied on you, somebody lied on me years ago, but because it was a lie, it went through. It went through the family and everybody thought that lie was true. And I'm only, uh, hey, <laughs> I am a living witness. My name is Miss Battle. I already told you I've fought many battles, and that's why I'm here today. I'm still standing. God had to get me through these battles. He said, you know what? You know what? You're going through these battles throughout your life because they don't stop. Because I chose you. I chose you to go through these battles. And you know why? Because I need you in my kingdom. Not just me. I'm talking to you too. God saying, I need you to, in my kingdom. So in order to, to go to the kingdom, you got to be able to fight spiritual battles. No, ain't no ifs and buts. Ain't no way around it because it's spiritual. We living in a spiritual world. Open up your eyes. Quit looking at the world and look at spiritual things and how things are starting to, to progress, you know, with the end time. But he's saying, I, I, I need you. I need you. I need you to go through these battles. I need you to have these troubles. I need you. Because, that way, because if you don't, you would never recognize it when it comes. You wouldn't recognize a mean person until you met a mean person. Yeah. Yeah. They, you, 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 you wouldn't recognize an, an artistic uh, person unless you meet one. You got to meet a narcissist. So that you can know this evil. That's what he had to show me. That's, that's the lesson. Oh, God, didn't he give me a lesson? Didn't he give me a lesson on narcissistic people and mean people? These are different people. Mean people, they act like they like you. They, they give you half truth and all of that. But I had a person, you know, just hanging out. We, we, we can hang out five days a week, you know. I, I can go cross town five days a week. And not one day, one night, did you make it home safe? No, oh, I can tell you about a mean person, okay? Because you can see these things and I done got all out. But I'm just trying to tell you, your troubles is to make you stronger. Your troubles is to, those are fights that you got to have. You got to fight these spiritual battles. You need to be in the kingdom of God and you need to be a warrior. Simple as that. How can you win a war? See, God can already won the war. The war has been won. We know the war is won. In the end, when God will roll up the world and Satan is cast into his pit of hell forever and ever, 
We're going to live this paradise that God intended in the beginning. We're going to live this Eden paradise. Yeah, where the, where the sheep can, can lay down with the, with the lions. But in order for you to, you've got to keep, keep fighting. Keep fighting. And let's not complain. Because, see, when we start complaining, when we start complaining, you, you kind of stopping God. God is pulling back. There you go complaining, you children of Israel. You children, you know, you quit complaining. The promised land is before you, but you got all these complaints. You won't make it to the promised land. That's all I'm saying. God don't like complaints. And now, I, I just got to, but the blaspheming is what I was talking about. As I was saying, Jesus, blaspheme, you can talk about Jesus. But the scriptures say he'll forgive you. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness. Because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit do what it do. Okay, the Holy Spirit changes people. The Holy Spirit convicts us. That's what the Holy Spirit do. The Holy Spirit keeps us at perfect peace. I'm telling you about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there in those lonely times. The Holy Spirit is there because now you, the Holy Spirit gets you back in your happy place. The Holy Spirit gets you, keep hope alive. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It gives you hope. It gives you, it gives you encouragement. Yeah, this is what the Holy Spirit does. If you want it, but you got to ask for these things. God said, if, what, if you ask me, I'm going to give it to you. But I can't give it to you if you don't ask me for it. It's, it's there for the takings because I've already won the battle. I've already won the war. You got to fight the battles yourself. You got to fight them yourself. He's already won the war. But these battles in this life, you've got to fight. And so with that being said, you are building your strength in the Lord. You are starting to trust in the Lord. You're starting to say, okay, God, okay, now I see. Now I see that this world don't love me. Now I see, because he had to show you. He had to show you, because you didn't believe it. You didn't believe this world didn't love you. You thought this world loved you. You thought these people loved you. Uh oh, uh, no, this world don't love you. That's what the scriptures say. But in order for you to believe it, I need you to go through it then. Go through the valley because you don't believe it. You don't think that meat is greasy. So now, go through this. Mm -hmm. Go through these trials. I need you to see this world don't love you. That's all this deception is out here. Let's keep going. Don't blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Because, see, the Holy Spirit is what transitions us. The Holy Spirit is what changes us from the inside out. And just because it don't look like it from the outside, it look like she's still doing the same thing she's doing. But they don't know your struggle. They don't know you done, you done, you done dropped it from daily to maybe 24 hours a day. You done dropped it from 24 hours a day. Down to an hour a day. They, they, they don't see that. They don't see that. It ain't for them to see. It ain't for them to see. And that's what the Lord had to show me. These, these things is for you, Miss Battle. I want you, Miss Battle, to get, get, rid of the, get rid of that swine in your life. Because that ain't going to do nothing but dry your, your blood pressure up. And get rid of it. And I, I, I said, okay, Lord. But then I came and I was like, I thought it was for everybody. Trust me, it is. But, but what he told me was it's not for everybody. There's common people. You know, I don't have to go back. Go back and find that video, okay, them videos. Because it is for the common people. Even when they came out of Egypt, they, they, and they cooked it they cooked after, after battles. They, they cooked the, for the holy, for the people of God. But then they also cooked some the unclean meat for the common people. So they got to eat. Every, God wants Moses to feed everybody because it was more than just the Hebrews that came out of Egypt with Moses. It was people that got converted. It was Egyptians. It was all kinds of people, common people. They just want to follow Moses. So therefore, 
Moses got the feet, you know, I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about after the, the manna. We talking about after the manna from heaven. We talking about when Joshua stored rain and we talking about, okay, because there's so many people now, we still got to feed them. Give it to the common people. Give what's holy to, to the holy people and give what's common to the common people. And that's why he say, you can't give what's holy to unholy people. Let's keep going. I want to finish this. And these are the things that defile a man. Okay. But to eat with unwashed hands is defile not a man. And then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman, a canon, a canon, a woman of canon came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, come on, Matthew. He's telling you that's what he can't, because they don't believe. They don't, they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, but they are God's people. And God said he's going to save his people. In the end, he's still going to have his people because there's going to be an awakening of his people. You hear what I'm saying? There is an awakening of the people of God, you know, us. Then came she in worship and said, Lord, help me. Don't you know you need to cry out to the Lord? Lord, help me. Help my unbelief. You got to. If you don't believe, ask the Lord to help your unbelief. If you're a liar, ask the Lord to help me stop lying, Lord. And it, 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 got, it got so much control over me that I lied and we don't even want to lie. That's, that causes this controlling you. I steal when I don't even want to steal. I have sex, even when I don't want to have sex. I fornicate. I'm telling this to keep it real video. Oh, yeah, I got it. It's 47 minutes in, <laughs> and I need to pray. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, truth. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And then Jesus answered and said unto her, Old woman, Great is thy faith, be it unto you, thee, even as thou will. He said, be it unto you as you believe. If you believe it, let it happen. Let it be. Let it be done. Just like what Mary said when, when the angel came and told her she was with child. She believed it. And you know what? That's what her words was. Lord, let it be as you say. Oh, woman, so that's faith, just by believing the word of God. Believe what the, your preacher, if your preacher is, is really preaching truth, believe it. Believe it. Believe the word of God. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O oh, woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, and even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from the very hour. See, you don't have to be there touching I mean, it's good if y'all can touch physically, join hands, pray, because you got to be on one accord. Don't be, don't be joining hands with somebody that don't, that, that ain't on one accord because you don't, that, so it's good to agree in the spirit because while you holding hands, agreeing, although God still will move, but look who hands you holding. You see what I'm saying? Whatever spirits they I ain't got to say that. Keep on going. Keep on going. And her daughter was made that very hour. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh into the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb speak and the maimed to be made whole, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified God, the God of Israel. 
And that's why all I got to say, I hope the God of Israel, our God, I hope I'm glorifying him in things I do. I really do. I really do. I let him get the glory. I'm not doing this on because I like doing it. I'm not doing it on my own accord. I'm doing it. I'm doing it because to glory God. Give God all glory. And that's what I say in the beginning. I give you all glory, Lord, because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be standing. And then Jesus, his disciples, then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint on the way. Three days, they ain't ate nothing. Oh, God. But they following, they hearing the word, they, they want the word, they're being enriched by the word, and they're growing in the word. So that's what, so fasting, when we, when we fast and stop eating for a day or two, we fighting the flesh. You are fighting this flesh, say, feed me, feed me, feed me, and you saying no, because the more we, we bow down to the flesh, let me eat something, let me just put a cracker in my mouth, let me, Come on. You're bowing down to your flesh. Now you, that's why your flesh got control over you. <laughs> Fasting is a powerful tool to grow spiritually. And if you don't know how to fast, none of us know. None of us knew. Okay? But we learn. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to fast. So he'll teach you little by little. You know, because, you know, we can try. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Well, let, me, let me just say this because I'm telling you, I know this at the big Bible maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago. I called myself fasting for three days. Was it three days? Or was it five days? Anywho, not really knowing, but see, God honored it, though. God honored it because at the time I was writing prayers then. But God honored it. And the reason why I say that, because I'm about to kill myself. I'm talking about fasting. I thought I was no water, no food. I'm fasting, baby. About to kill myself. About to fall out. <laughs> Let's go. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, and his disciples said unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? He said, where are we going to get this bread from? We're in the wilderness. And Jesus said unto them, how many loaves have ye? And they said, seven. This is a different time. See, first it was five. Now it's seven. Seven loaves have ye? Have ye? And they said, seven. And a few little fish. You know what a few is. A few is more than, more than two. Mm -hmm. More than two. A few is more than two, but less than five. And he commanded the, the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and break them and gave to his disciples. And the disciples to the multitude. He gave it to the disciples, say, here, pass it, pass it out. And they did all eat and were full. And they took up the broken meat that was left, seven baskets full. Remember, last time was 12 baskets. Seven is the number of completion. Now, I ain't going to get into numbers. Find another video back there. I did that already. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the broken meat that was left, seven baskets full. And they that did eat were 4,000 men, besides women and children. And he sent away the multitude and took ship. And came into the coast of Magdala. Chapter 16. I see, I, I see that uh, my goal of finishing Matthew was not, is not going to be fulfilled. Unless I, because now Matthew is nice, nice little length. Uh, 28 chapters. But, it's prayer time. I'm, I'm, I'm already in the hour, but Father God, most holy. Most holy, most holy and everlasting God. Father God, I just come to you thanking you. Yes, Lord. I thank you for everything you're doing. 
Oh, Father God, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us to receive truth. Help us not to be offended by truth, Lord. Help us, Lord. Oh, God, I just lift you up. And I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you, that you bless everybody that watches this video. Give them a special blessing, Lord. Help us. Help us, Father. I pray, Lord, right now. I pray. I pray for your saints. I pray for peace. Yes, Lord, peace. And I pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, Lord, I pray. I pray that no weapons formed against us, Lord, should prosper. Yes, no weapons, no weapons, no weapons are formed against us should prosper. That's what your word say, and I believe it. I pray, Lord, I pray to help the unbeliever. Oh, yes, Lord, I pray that you touch them. Touch them, Lord, because they want to believe. Help them to believe, Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, Lord, I pray and pray for your people. I pray that salvation come, Lord, to those that, that you draw. Oh, God. Oh, God, I pray. I pray, Lord, yes. I pray that they obey because just because you draw them don't mean that they will obey. So my prayer is that they obey in the name of Jesus. I pray for the people. I pray for your people. I pray for your people to come to you. Come to you before it's all said and done. I pray that we are enlightened with the light of the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Have a blessed day.